I'm Eddie Price, one of the promoters for Haunted Hickory Paranormal Conference. I'm here with one of our guests, uh, Nathan Schoonover. I uh, just wanted to chat with him for a little while. Sure. Uh, this is your first time to the Hickory area. It right? is. It's a, yeah. What do you think about Hickory? I'm loving it. Uh, I'm loving the venue. I'm loving everything that's going on. Excellent. Great. Well, first question, um, being in the, in the paranormal field, usually there's some impetus in a person's life that, uh, what? Did that you call me impotent? That. What was that? <laughs> what, what, what got you into it? Um, I tell people all the time I really got involved because uh, when I was about 12 years old, I thought I was all grown up and should be able to go to uh, theology and lecture classes on demons and the occult. And right there afterwards, I learned that I wasn't as grown up as I thought because I couldn't sleep for three months uh -huh. with the idea that this stuff was real. So my mother thought the best thing for me was to learn more about it uh, so that I would be less afraid of it. Then she regretted doing that because then I became too interested in it and didn't want to give it up. I just kept studying and But studying. that's really amazing that your, your mom was so supportive. Well, she was supportive because she wanted me to not be afraid of it. And she, you know, she didn't want me to have any fears that way. Now, did this come from like uh, uh, your religious affiliation? Was it something to do with the church? The yeah, my, my, mother is a, my mother is a, Baptist, a retired Baptist prison missionary. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I think from the time I was about seven, they planned on my being a minister. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, my, my, my focus has mainly been on the way people look at hauntings through their religious beliefs, through their upbringings, uh, through the different things that have happened to them, figuring out what they think is happening so that you can counsel them through it. You had an excellent presentation on that last Thank you. night. That was that was really really enlightening because I think um, you know when you watch uh, watch shows on paranormal and haunting and stuff, you see that the perception is so different yeah. depending upon whether it's it's overseas or whether you know it's in Asia, uh, the UK, uh, Africa here. What I find interesting is you know even from like. Uh, one religious set of beliefs to the next in the same community can be, can be so different. Um, and uh, your position is that in order to resolve an issue with uh, something that's, uh, that's uh, violent or a problem, uh, a haunting type thing, you really need to work through the individual's religious belief system, right? The way, right. I, the way I see it is even if you believe, if you're going to help the people and you believe that there's only one God, that there's only one way to deal with this, you can't go in and tell the person that right off the bat because they're not going to trust you. So you have to take their religious beliefs into effect. You have to learn what they feel is going on. You have to help them with their issues. And if you can only help them in one particular way, you try and help them that way. If they don't want the help, you have to find them, get the, help them get the help they want. Now, one of the, the question that I asked last night that um, that I wanted some clarification on, you know, from from, from your presentation was. Um, whether or not you believed that um, that uh, these entities came from different sources or the same sources. That is to say, you know, if you're in Japan and someone's having a haunting, is that an oni? And whereas in the United States, if someone's having a haunting, is it the spirit of the dead? Are they the same thing or are they different? I think that they're basically the same thing that manifest in the way that the people have imagined them to become because of their upbringings and religions. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody is raised to believe that a, uh, a demon is an animal spirit, then they're gonna, it's going to take the form of an animal spirit. If they believe it, that it's going to be a malevolent spirit, an evil entity, a fallen angel, that's the way it's going to manifest. And so by knowing what the person believes, you can help them through it. Now, in your experience, are there pitfalls in, let's say, for instance, uh, what if someone were a Protestant or a Buddhist or some, some, something other than Catholic and they had a, a, a haunting situation and a priest came in to resolve it, what, what would that do? Well, with, with uh, you, again, sometimes people are just looking for help and they'll take help anywhere. Uh, but uh, I find you know, the Catholic Church mainly wants to help with Catholic members. Mm -hmm. um, Protestant churches um, are less are less enthused to get involved, uh, but will help if they're members of the church. And you, you know, one of the things I've often have to do is sit there and get involved as a intermediary between the person having the problem and their own church, because the person doesn't know how to speak to their church about it in such a way that the priest understands that they need to, or the minister understands 
they need to come out and help. Now, have you found that, uh, that some religious groups are um, less likely to provide help or a little bit more skeptical? Some or? are, some are. The more fundamentalist the group gets, usually the more uh, skeptical they are to go out and work on a case. But I don't have anything against fundamentalist groups. I was raised fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually gave me the spiritual upbringing that I have that I work with now. Mm -hmm. um, to answer what you were going towards before, um, you were asking about groups that having trouble getting them out, I think it was, or yes, yeah. um, some of them, some of them, it, it's it's nearly impossible to get help. Um, some of them are all about just going out and helping the people. Some, uh, it's, it's just like pulling teeth sometimes. It really. I, is. I would imagine that there are some religious groups and denominations that really don't have. Uh, uh, you know, helping someone with a, a, a ghost or a demonic something in their their belief structure. Does that... Uh, does some that of them don't. Some of them basically, um, if, if somebody's having a problem, if you go to them and tell them you're dealing with this issue, it's really in the way you talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the great things of working with all these different groups I've gotten to learn over the years is how to say things to different groups to get them to open up a little bit more to it. Like I said during the lecture yesterday that if you go into some, if you're speaking to a minister, you don't want to tell him uh, that this is what is happening. You want to go into it and tell him, we're getting this kind of information. This is appearing. The person is going through this. They want to deal with it in a spiritual way. They need your help. You, you speak to them in a way that the minister can understand what's going on not from a paranormal point of view, but from his faith point of view, and now he's willing to go out and help. Where if you go to the minister and speak to him in a way uh, of a total ghost story, he's not going to listen. It's not his thing. Now, and the, the other question I asked last night is, what if you run across an agnostic or an atheist, someone who does not have, have, have a belief system? Is there a secular means of clearing uh, of a problem like a, like a haunting or a possession or, an there's, or something like there's that. There's not really a secular means of clearing a malevolent haunt since, or a demonic haunt especially because uh, secular and demonic just doesn't mix. Yeah, I, I, uh, you always hear the term religious demonologist and I wonder, is, is there a secular demonologist? It's why I tell is people, there, like my, my bio all the time says Nathan Schoonover is not a demonologist. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not a psychic, a parapsychologist, a theologist, a uh, reverend, a priest, or a monk. Um, I, uh, no, there is not a secular demonology because <laughs> it, it would kind I of, imagine. It, would, it would be a few years back I remember a court declaring that um, atheism was now a religion because it was the belief in that there was nothing. Well. So, um, you know, if, if there's nothing out there, then what do you have to be afraid of? Usually, like I said last night, if uh, I, I kind of give them the paranormal beat on the situation, say this is what you can do to look for evidence, this is what you can do for this, you know, this is what you can do for that, and then I leave for a week. And if it's still going on, they won't be an atheist that much longer. So, what we, you know, having studied the comparative religions and their, their, their interpretations of this, um, what would you say would be the easiest group to deal with as far as uh, a haunting, and what would be the most difficult group to deal with? Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to go into specific religions, I don't know which ones are yeah. hard to say. There are certain um, religions that strictly do not believe that there are anything, any ghosts. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're really sometimes hard to deal with because everything's a demon. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, usually it's not. And then there are groups that are very spiritualist and are even pagan in nature that everything is a spirit and there are no demons. So again, you're dealing with an issue there. Mm -hmm.